In 1951, a 16-year-old black girl uh, walked out of her black high school in Farmville, Virginia, to protest the conditions of that school. Um, of course, in 1951, schools were segregated, so there was a black high school and a white high school. And she had seen the, the white high school that was just down the street and knew how much better the facilities were at, at the white high school. So she led a protest um, with her fellow students to walk out to, pro to protest the conditions of that school. Um, and the protest attracted the attention of the NAACP in Richmond, Virginia, who initially wasn't interested, weren't interested in taking on her case, um, but they did agree to come to Farmville and meet with the students and their parents there. And after seeing how dedicated these parents and students were to their cause, um, they, they told them that they would be willing to take on their case. But it was on one condition, and that condition was that they would seek um, integration rather than, than equal facilities. A year earlier in 1950, the NAACP had changed direction and decided that equal facilities were never going to be enough and that they needed to seek desegregation in schools and in all facets of public life. Um, and so the students who had this kind of core committee of students who had planned for months this walkout actually had to take a vote on whether they were gonna agree to, to go along with what the NAACP was asking. And, and according to students who were there, their decision to go along with this only won by one vote, <laughs> which is crazy to me. Um, and so this case ended up becoming one of five cases in Brown versus Board of Education. So Brown is an umbrella case, which I didn't realize until I started um, reporting this, that, that Prince Edward was, was the only case of the five that was student-led, and it produced 75% of the plaintiffs um, for the entire Brown case. Um, so I think that that, that uh, case emerging from out of, out of Prince Edward County is kind of what set the stage for what happened many years later when the schools were closed. Um, I think white leaders were embarrassed that, that, their, that this case was filed against them, and they, they suggested that they would build a black high school for the students. They would replace the high school as had been requested of them for many years um, if only the black students and their parents would drop this, this suit. Um, but by that point, the black families wanted to move forward with the suit. And, and so white leaders did go ahead and build this new high school in 1953 anyway. Um, and it, as you know, the Brown decision was handed down a year later. Um, I think that the, the white leaders' response to the Brown decision um, had a lot to do with embarrassment, right? They, they were, and, they, and also fear, they were afraid that their community would be held up as an example to the rest of the nation and required um, to desegregate their schools first as an example. Um, Senator Byrd, Senator Harry Byrd, um, led a pushback to, to Brown v. Board of Education that came to be known as massive resistance. He believed that, that communities should push back to this require, requirement to desegregate schools and that if, if Virginia pushed back, then the South would get behind them. And, and if the South you know, refused to desegregate its schools, then the rest of the country would realize that, that they were never gonna get on board. I, I don't know if he hoped that the case would be overturned. I'm not, I'm not sure what his logic was there. But um, that was his thinking, right? And so there were a lot of people in, in Southside Virginia, um, where Prince Edward County is located, that, that supported um, that logic. And so they, in Prince Edward and other communities around Southern Virginia, um, they formed these groups called the Defenders of State Sovereignty and Individual Liberties. Um, and, the, and in Farmville, that group suggested just six months after the Brown um, hearing, the Brown decision, that, that perhaps closing the schools is something they should do to avoid desegregation. If push came to shove, that they would be willing to do that. Um, and I found in my research that the local newspaper also suggested this within six months of the decision. Um, and the pages of this newspaper that were shaping public opinion said, you know, we're going to refuse to, to desegregate our schools, and if we have to, we will close the schools rather than do so. 